I'm Lee and this is my story. So stories, stories always, always are interesting, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and some stories are complicated, and some aren't, and some stories are um, have have a lot happening, and some stories move at a slower pace. And I love hearing about your story. And I think what is really cool is that our story is unique in how we met. Yes. Do you remember the day we met? Well, I met you twice. Uh oh. I've, I met you twice. Really? One before I came into the church. Really? But I, yeah. But I didn't recognise you when I came in. I didn't. I didn't. Because I, I didn't know what you did. I saw you outside the house. My home. Yes. Yes. Where you're living. Yep. And all the kids were outside. Yes. Your kids. Yes. We all still. Oh, that's right. And still was playing with Alex. I recall, yes, and, we and did, I we had did a little conversation, yes. and I was talking about games and how I've just moved into the neighbourhood. And did you believe that, you know, the kids are outside playing all the time? And you mm -hmm. said, "Yes, they mm -hmm. are." And I'm like, "Yes, yeah, wonderful." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I wanted to get still out and about. That's right. We did have that exchange. Yeah, I do remember. Your hair was down. <laughs> I remember your hair, and you had long hair. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I remember, and I didn't know what you did. Yeah. And then when I came in here, I. Did, yeah, yeah. You were. So, like, I think some of the background to to us even just meeting on that day, but some of the background was we we have um, a twelve year old son, and this new guy just started kind of walking into our house and spending off <laughs> a, a, quite a bit of time at our house, and and his name was Steele, and uh, I remember saying to my husband, "Gosh, he's over here a lot. I hope." His parents are okay <laughs> with him being at our house because he was there quite a bit, you know. And, yeah. Um, and you know, we we just we just hadn't really met you a whole lot, so our, our thinking was, oh gosh, is he okay? So look, then bring us to the day where you walked into our into our building. Um, well, I remember I was really upset over something that was going on in my life, and. I didn't want to go and pick up Steele from school, being upset. I wanted to be calm. And I tried to actually contact a couple of my um, support network, if you like, and I couldn't get onto them. What am I going to do? Um, so I remember the Salvation Army because all my kids had gone to the kindy year. So I thought, I'll just go to the Salvation Army and see if I can chat to someone in the Salvation Army. And so I came in and yeah, I came and saw you, and I remember that um, really I was just in a lot of pain, emotional pain, and I was crying, and um, you were just chatting to me and calming me down, and you know, just made me feel okay, that everything was going to be all right, um, and I settled enough where I could go and pick steel up. But at the end of the conversation, um, like I didn't know who you, you lived down the down the street. I didn't know who you were until I mentioned picking up steel. And then you said, steel? Do you live at Carindale? I said, yeah. And um, you said, oh, Alec, my son Alec plays with steel. I said, oh, that's my son. <laughs> and then I said, oh, my God, how embarrassing. Oh, my God. I'm so embarrassed. Um, but, yeah, then I just went and picked up my son. And then since then I didn't come to church straight after that conversation. Um, it took probably three months, I think, before I actually managed to get the courage to walk into the door. Um, we still, still came with me, and I was petrified. <laughs> I was really scared coming in, because it's only a small con con congregation, this one. Whereas I'd been to another church and it was rather large, so you can hide, it's a different scenario. So when I came in here, um, and I was still going through what I was going through. So there was a lot of emotions coming up. And then when I was in the church and the songs came on, I was crying. I just kept crying. Um, I had a lot of grieving to do. Um, 
But you know what, it felt safe. It was a safe place to be able to do that. Um, sometimes I left and thought, oh, why did you have to cry? But God was allowing me to cry, really. He was saying it's okay. So I was crying. And, um, and then um, I did a couple of volunteer things here as well um, because I wanted to get more involved in the church. Um, and that was good and still also helped with the um, food packaging and we did the gifts um, last year. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed that and then COVID hit and that all sort of came to a, a halt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're still kind of journeying through that, hey? The whole COVID yes. thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot with that. I think when I look back, when I look back and reflect upon um, the, the way that we met, uh, I think, well, the everyday person maybe would think coincidence, yeah? Right? Yeah. And because we sat there, we sat there for a few minutes going, how crazy is that? Like, how crazy that our boys were playing together and we didn't recognize or know each other, and yet something was drawing you here, the connection of kindy, whatever it was. Yeah. I remember you telling me on that day, you know, you were. You were driving past and just said, okay, that's it. I've got to, I've got to go in. And you just turned in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And um, when I reflect on that, I see how even the relationship with our boys was probably building and helping and God was orchestrating the opportunity that we have now today to be in relationship together, to be in church together, to experience him through different things in different ways. And uh, I was saying, we, we run together as well. We a couple do. times. We've, we, we've done we it have. a couple of times. We have, yeah. yes. And that's good fun. <laughs> there's there's nothing better than some good running. Oh, I totally agree. Yeah, very... How? Th th therapy. Yeah. <laughs> running is therapy. Mm. Yes, yes. And how important has... has physical activity been to to your journey? Oh, Just massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's been a big part of me being able to heal, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been... I gave up running for a long time um, and that was to please someone else. Mm -hmm. And when I started running again, I just... Yeah, it just gave me a sense of self. Mm -hmm. started to give myself a, you know another journey on my own and then I did the half marathon which I never thought I'd be able to do 21 k's down the Gold Coast and um, that was amazing you know loved it and hopefully we're going to be able to do a 21 on Sunday <laughs> hopefully we'll if your hips all right if my hips work okay yeah 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 I'm getting old what can I say it's not good no, you're no. not getting old <laughs> what can I say it's not good uh, yes. What do you think? What do you think God is teaching you during this, like the journey and thinking of um, coming to connecting here, coming to church, COVID? I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I know that you you are on a massive journey, and we've had opportunity to talk about some of those things. What do you think? What do you think God is teaching you in the middle of all of that to love myself mm. and um, be okay with who I am live my journey mind my own business <laughs> with things that I can't control um, yeah massive learning yeah and that I, I am okay because I am a child of God you know and I am okay that's a big one. Yeah. Oh, it's massive. There's a song that you guys sing here, I'm a Child of God, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, that gets me all the, every time. Yes. Yeah. Hits, hits me. And some of the words of that one, I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you I'm say I am. Yeah. I'm a Child of God. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the identity thing is a big, it's a big thing. Like yeah. knowing who you are. Yeah, and it's a long life journey, I believe. 
but I'm just sort of starting to say to myself, what would I do if I really loved myself in this situation? Like, so what you're talking about right now is is stuff that young young girls, for example, right, have to journey through. Like, like the the, the concept of loving yourself and. And I guess one of the things that I think is really important that's part of your journey is the fact that it's never too late. Oh, never too late. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never too late. And there's there's lots of time for you to just be on that journey and to figure that out. Lots of time. Yeah. Yeah. And like, if I look back, I couldn't have done any better anyway with where I was, like I was at where I was at. So I couldn't have forced the journey any sooner than how it's happened for me. You know, and everyone's on their own journey. You know, people love themselves at 17, I guess, but I, that wasn't me, you know. I was self-destructive, you know, all throughout my teenage years, my 20s, my 30s, you know. Late, late 30s, I started on my, my journey of self-discovery. I, I think it's important to to just kind of say, like, you're on a journey, I'm on a journey, but we don't have it all figured out. No, I don't have it figured out. Lee, you don't have it figured out? I don't. So you're sitting here. Do you? Oh, I don't have it figured no. out. But you're sitting here and you're saying, look, I don't, I don't have it all figured out. No, just learning. I just learn something new every day. And every day isn't easy. No, not at all. Yeah, some days I wake up and I just think, how am I going to get through this day? But I do. I get through it. I'm Lee. I'm Krista. And, and this, this is, is our story. story.